good day ladies and gentlemen we are welcome to our lecture number one on CMAN 846 which is advanced testing methods and reliability of electronics systems uh, as usual in every course we try to revise the fundamentals of the course from what we have learned maybe during our undergraduate studies or other levels of studies and then we start the course a proper and uh, the first thing we are going to be looking at are the characteristics of instrumentation and also we want to uh, revise a conceptual uh, model of the measurement process and this will be done in the context of a simple generalized instrument model that is why revising what are the instruments we are going to be looking at the specific instrument at this revision level but rather we are going to look at the generalized model of instrument that is measurement instrument now we start by revising the definition of an instrument which we define as a device any device that is used for transforming a physical variable of interest that is the measurement what you want to measure it can be current it can be voltage it can be speed it can be anything so that device that can transform that physical uh, variable into the form that is suitable for recording that is that is suitable for human being to see and interpret and for consistency uh, we have to also uh, remember that the measurement we are going to employ a standard systems of the measurement because everybody is supposed to know that even from the uh, secondary school we know that there are units for any quantity that will be measured so we are going to use the standardized what we call the SI units and as we said let us look at the simple instrument model we said we are going to be taking the models so if we look at the, this diagram we can see that this is the physical process that we want to measure and as i have said it can be a voltage it can be current it can be frequency it can be any of the available variables now from it we now take the physical environment variable that is the reading from this physical process and what takes it is the sensor it is the one that will detect and collect that signal from the physical process and then produce its output as the signal variable s and this output can be in any form it can be current also it can be voltage it can be anything and this uh, signal variable will now be transmitted to the uh, uh, display unit which will show the magnitude of the physical variable which is sensed by the sensor and interpreted to give us the physical reading that we can understand now this table is given us some of the common variables that can be measured using electronics measurement instruments and it also gives us the uh, typical signals variables that can be used for displaying what is measured on the left hand side you can see force length temperature acceleration velocity pressure frequency you can see capacity you can see resistance time and many more all these are some of the variables that can be measured from a physical environment and then it will be detected by a sensor and the sensor will produce a corresponding output and the types of the output that the voltage i mean the sensor produce include voltage also it uh, includes displacement current force pressure light and frequency and of course these are not the end of the list but there are many more now if the signal output from the sensor is very small so sometimes it is very necessary for you to use an amplifier you have to amplify that signal so that the output can be seen uh, very clearly now as you can see this diagram this is our physical measurement from the environment and this is our sensor so the output signal from the sensor which we said if it is very small then we have to use an amplifier this one and this amplifier will now boost the level of the measured signal by the sensor and of course most of these signals measured they are in form of analog 
So if you want to change it to a digital, then you have to include another component that is the analog to digital converter. The output of this analog to digital converter will now be transmitted to computer and it can be stored in the uh, memory of the computer and of course at the same time if you wish you can display it somebody may say this is an analog display yes what we are just saying is whatever goes to this computer it is possibly stored in the memory and of course it can be displayed and since we have changed it to the from the analog to digital definitely it has to be a digital display but this one is just a symbol now with that we have to now look at what we call calibration because you have to calibrate your instrument for it to be responding to the physical environment or the physical signal it is measuring and what is this calibration as we supposed to have known before it is just the relationship between the physical variable which is the input and the signal variable which is the output from the sensor so the relationship between the two is what we call the calibration and for you to understand this or to remember this very well let us look at this uh, 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 figure you can see that the figure we have a vertical axis which is our signal output and the horizontal axis is our signal input which is from the physical variable and you can see this is the origin that is where the physical variable then measured is zero and of course the output must be zero so as the variable being measured as the physical signal x is increasing you will find a corresponding increase of the output and from the origin up to this point we have a linear relationship that is the increase in the physical variable is proportional to that of the output so the moment you go to that extreme point you start reaching the point where the physical variable is changing but the corresponding change in the output variable is very very small and after that you will reach a point where your curve will be horizontal meaning whatever change we have in the input that is the physical variable the measurement you will not have any change in the corresponding value of the output and this point is where we call the saturation okay so the ability of the instrument to change as a result of change in the physical uh, signal it is measuring is what we call the sensitivity and it is defined by ds all over dx where s is the output signal and the x is the input signal and i told you whenever the curve becomes horizontal that is the point we call the saturation point now all this thing i have already uh, explained it i said the sensor has a re linear relationship with the values of the physical input which is given by x naught and the sensitivity we define it by measuring the slope that is ds all over dx i have already explained this one and if you look at this our physical input is our x naught and when the curve becomes less sensitive it reaches what we call the point of saturation i have already explain this and the moment you reach that point your device cannot measure anything because despite the fact that the input is changing the output will remain somehow constant and the difference between the largest and the smallest physical input that can reliably be measured that is within the limit of linearity as we have seen in this diagram up to this point where the relationship is linear so the difference between the smallest and the largest physical inputs that you can reliably measure by the instrument we call it the dynamic range of that device anything beyond that it is saturation and it cannot be measured having seen that let us look at another general um, uh, uh, block diagram of measurement instrument where we use what we call modifying signals and inputs uh, interfering input so if you look at this one also we assume this is our physical input that we are measuring and as we have seen in the previous case we represented by this symbol x but at the same time we have another random input from the space which is just a noise that is at the same time be measured by this sensor so if these two inputs goes into the sensor uh, go into this sensor definitely their summation 
the effect of the two will be produced as the output and this will make our measurement wrong in order to uh, 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 solve that problem of interference we now introduce another signal ourselves its function is to counter the interfering input which is the noise and it is represented by x so these two will come into the sensor and the z will also come its function is to cancel the effect of y which is the interfering uh, uh, input so uh, i have already also explained this we said sometimes the sensor is influenced by some physical variables other than the intended one that is the 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 the, 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 the noise i talked about and as we have said x is the intended measurement but y is interfering input we use z in order to modify or to cancel the effect of that one and this is shown in the figure 1.4 as we have seen in this diagram here and the major signal definitely it will be the summation combination of x and y now definitely the output should be wrong that is why we are introducing modifying input which is what x in order to cancel the effects of that y which is the noise and for different values of this uh, modifying uh, input z definitely we are going to have different slots for the calibration curves so whenever you are changing the value of your modifying uh, input definitely the result will also change and this will go a long way affecting the accuracy of what you are measuring because we have to tune we have to change the value of that z to be equivalent and opposite to only y okay so the common examples of this modifying input is just a temperature and that is the reason why when you have any measurement device they will give you in their specification that it has to be measured at this so so temperature maybe room temperature around 25 degrees celsius or there about so whenever you use it outside that temperature you would find that the reason or the reading will be somehow wrong and this is what we have been saying for instance whenever you keep on changing the value of z this is z1 this is z2 this z3 you see that the cup have different inclinations and of course we cannot say all the three are correct so it is the duty of the designer to make sure that he uses interfering input that will accurately cancel sorry the modifying input that will accurately cancel the effects of the interfering signal which is the noise now we are going to talk about accuracy and the error of the measurement instrument as i told you all these are just revisions so what is an accuracy the accuracy of any instrument is of course the difference between the true value of the measurement and the actual value that is indicated by the instrument for instance if i take a battery that has a voltage of 1.5 for instance dc battery and i know for sure its voltage is 1.5 but when i measured it using my instrument i get 1.49 definitely the difference between the two is what we call the accuracy and of course it is the error now the value the true value is defined as the reference uh, absolute value that is agreed upon as i told you whenever you buy a small battery for your uh, radio uh, uh, receiver you find that the voltage is 1.5 that's the standard then for any measurements there will be some errors and these errors are caused by different reasons one of them is what we call systematic errors sometimes we call them bias errors and so we have another type of error which is for random or noise this is the error that we cannot see exactly what causes it let us start looking at the uh, systematic error that is the bias error what are the causes of the bias error one of them is whenever you change the input and output response of your sensor definitely your calibration will change and the output should be wrong that is an error that is whenever the sensitivity of your uh, 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 sensor changes from the actual value it will introduce an error and this type of error we call it systematic error because it has to do with the system itself because sensor is part of the measurement system 
So the modifying input and the interfering input can result in a sensor miscalibration. That is, whenever the values keep on changing randomly in such a way that the modifying is not cancelling the interfering completely, definitely an error will occur, and that error is also a systematic error. And of course, whenever the temperature is used as the modifying input, then whenever you use the temperature at other I mean the sensor at other temperature different from the specified one definitely the result will be wrong and this will cause what we call systematic error and also if this systematic error source if the source is known it is very easy for us to uh, correct it using methods that we call compensation as I have started explaining the modifying signal is compensating signal its function is to trace the value of the interference which is noise and eliminate it completely and some in some uh, sensors the aging that is when you have been using the sensor for a very long time definitely its quality will start reducing degrading and for this it will res it, uh, its response will be wrong and we have systematic error and whenever you have any of the components within your measurement instrument when it is damaged or it is used wrong, wrongly that is abused definitely the sensor can change the calibration and it will cause systematic error now how do we prevent systematic errors the first thing is we have to be taking our sensors or the measurement devices to calibration places so that it will be recalibrated sometimes you do it monthly quarterly or sometimes even after one year or more but recalibrating the sensor actually restart it to its actual uh, set value and your measurement to reduce systematic error and systematic error can also occur it can happen if the measurement process itself is changed that is the process is supposed to take your measurement you do it differently you are introducing an error and that is also a systematic error and whenever there is an interaction between the measurement and the measurement device then you have to make sure that you use or you do your measurement in accordance with the set rules of the measurement device if not the systematic error will happen for instance whenever there is a friction in mechanical measurement we know definitely the signal will be wrong and that is systematic error also and in case of using measurement electric signal when the set value of resistance has changed the flow of signal will also change and for this reason we should have an error and it is part of the word systematic error and finally the systematic error or the bias error can be due to human error due to observation this is one of the things that everybody knows from the physics uh, at secondary school level when you are looking at the result from a wrong angle we will have what we call the parallax error or error due to parallax so all these things we have mentioned they are just revision on sources of error that we call systematic errors now let us look at the random errors the random errors as the name uh, shows sometimes we call it the noise and it's defined as the signal that carries no useful information and in most cases the source of the random error is not known because so many different things can cause it and if you make so many measurements uh, with a true random error is repeated you take post measurement we know there is random error take second one you keep on taking more measurement you find that the float of this uh, 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 error should give us what we call the Gaussian distribution curve which is given by this that is to say when your uh, measurement at the first time is zero definitely the random error should also be what zero but you keep when you keep on taking more measurement values you see that the number of random errors will be increasing and you are going to have this curve as your you are going to have this curve as your Gaussian distribution curve which is representing the random error 
Now, let us look at measurement, how we carry measurement with noise, because we have already seen that whenever you are taking measurements, the variable is x. Sometimes you have another interfering signal given by y, and that is why we use modifying signal z to cancel the y. Now, this noise, it can happen at different stages. If you look at the diagram, here is my source of measurement. And the signal from it, we actually represent it by x, though it is not here. And this is the error or the noise from the environment. And the two of them will go into the sensor. And of course, the sensor is also subjected to another error from the environment. Now, when the output is produced, then as I told you, whenever the signal is very small, we use an amplifier to boost its, its value. Now, the output of this amplifier it can also be attacked by another error. So the stages where errors happen are three. That is the environmental error at the point of detecting the physical variable to be measured. There is uh, a noise also at the uh, sensor itself. And after the amplifier, when transmitting the result to the display unit or the storage unit, we do have another a noise and we call it a transmission noise. So the noises happen in three different levels at the measurement environment at the sensor and at the transmission point now the next thing is we look at another concept which we supposed to know all these things are revision that is the sensor fusion and this sensor fusion is depicted by this diagram this is my instrument i mean this is my physical variable that i want to measure but instead of using only one sensor i cascade number of them let's say number one number two and number three so each one will detect the value of the signal from the physical variable and the three of them will produce their corresponding output that the signal output s1 s2 and s3 and the output of these three will be combined together using sensor fusion the essence of doing that is to take the average of the three so that the accuracy of the measurement will finally increase because if you can remember the kind of experiment we do in ordinary level physics for instance a, 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 a pendulum simple pendulum experiment you take like 20 different readings it is and each one you take the periods of its 20 oscillation or 100 oscillation the essence is to average the, all of them and get the answer that will be closer to the truth value so the fusion combining of sensor one two three it's aim is to combine the output through the sensor fusion so that we take the average and finally get the final result which we hope will be better than when we use one uh, sensor now uh, this is what i said uh, i'm just repeating many sensors are modeled to observe the same environment their output are now enhance the result as i've said and this one is used for phenomena that are difficult to be observed if you know the accuracy in taking that reading whatever it is is somehow difficult you take a number of readings average them so that you get a better output one example of this uh, process is, is thermal compensation of a transducer where the measurement of the temperature is met you are measuring temperature and your compensating signal is also heat so you are in a process where you are measuring almost the same things, but one is the real and the other one is what? The compensating signal. So we use this kind of model in order the output of the a transducer should give us a better result so that it will take the average of all the readings. And other more sophisticated sensor fusion processes is the one where we are taking image. We want to take image of anything. So we use different uh, uh, devices for taking the reading you take reading using using your uh, radar you take it in a using, using optical instrument and also you use it you take reading using infrared image capturing system so if you combine the three and push, uh, pass them through a sensor fusion device it will average them and give you a better image which is better than that of the radar alone or that of, that of the optical alone or that of the in, uh, infrared now we also are going to look at the revisions for mode of uh, instrumentation 
we have different types of them. We have what we call the first one is small uh, instrument. The null uh, instrument is the instrument that operates in such a way that you have a standard value, you place it at one arm of the measurement device, and you now put your variable value in the other one until when they are level, they become stabilized at zero point. Then we now say what we are trying to measure the unknown is actually equal to the non value. And this is the block diagram. This is my non input. Just like if you go to uh, a market, you want to buy nails, you see they are doing that. They will take one uh, solid metal, which is uh, of different uh, uh, sizes, 100 gram, 100 kilogram, whatsoever. Then they will put it on one arm of the scale and they will start pulling your nails on the other one. Whenever they balance, then they will give you. We know this. Now, uh, this is our non input, and this is our unknown input. This one. We call it a balancing input or the balance input and this is our measuring the one we want to measure so the value of this ones are trying to cancel one another that's why this one is minus and this is positive whenever they comes in we're supposed to have the sum to be equal to zero meaning the non is equal to the unknown and in a situation where we have a value coming out from this uh, uh, sum which is not equal to zero definitely we will have a deflection but we're supposed to have a zero isn't it now when we have a reading here that reading will be used as a feedback so that it will be transferred to the non-value for future correction when taking any other reading now we have a deflection instrument this is the instrument that doesn't have any balancing uh, uh, arm it has only one arm you put what you want to measure and the displacement will be created either by weight or either by current whatsoever then you read the value of what you are measuring and measuring and look at it for instance let's say this is a pan and this is a spring and this is our indicating uh, display output whenever you put a weight on this definitely the weights will press the spring down and this pointer will now be moving downwards from zero downward and whatever is ready you can see it on this scale and actually this is the block flow diagram this is our input that is the uh, prime element that we want to use for measurement our transducer now. then it will create some deflection signal and we now pass it to another block for conditioning the signal so that it, it can be analog display or digital display and this condition signal will now take into the output scale that is this display unit and you have your output meaning it's only one signal not two as in the case of the null instrument and also the instruments are divided into analog and digital the analog is the one in which the output is continuous you have different values at the same time but the digital is the one that is discrete it will give you exact value one two three whatsoever but this one it has values at any point in time so uh, this is what we're supposed to look at as the fundamental revision on this measurement uh, instrument and of course you have seen the work or the cost in include the reliability of electronics uh, systems so thank you very much uh, this is the end of our lecture today uh, uh, watch it and watch it again though this is revision but still you need to watch it in order to properly remember thank you